Happy Independence Day, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to pick up where I left off. When you last saw me, I was in the hotel, uh, dreading, you know, going on the long journey. Um, obviously, I was praying and I had a lot of people praying for me. And um, so the next morning, I got in the rental car and I started driving to Chicago. I kind of got lost. Well, I saw the Cincinnati Red Stadium and I was like, oh my gosh, am I lost? What's going on? I had a little kind of a panic attack and called my friend and we prayed and I calmed down and kept going on the journey. And then there was at one point, my GPS was just bringing me in circles. I put a message on Facebook. Hey, is anybody around that is near an atlas that can help me? My great friend, Danielle Omar Omara, um, called me and literally talked me from that point to Chicago to where I was like, just going to have to drive straight for 95 miles. So that was wonderful. Another great friend of mine bought my train ticket for me. So amazingly sweet. And also sent me some camping equipment on ahead to Montana for me. So I got to Chicago I found that I can do okay in a hotel, a Hilton hotel, um, if I do these things. I have to take off the comforter um, and take the comforter and any uh, feather pillows, anything that's uh, laundered maybe with a dryer sheet. I put it all in the closet and close the door, and then I turn on the exhaust fan and crank the air conditioning to get the Lysol out of the air. I asked them if they could not spray it with Lysol, but they said that wasn't an option because of COVID. So then I went back outside for about half an hour and let that kind of air out and then went in, took a shower and fell asleep, Was slept pretty all right. The next morning, finished driving to Chicago, went to the Hertz rental car. The guy in the parking garage helped me carry my bags to the front. I paid him. Uh, so then I was in the office. They called a taxi for me. I got in the taxi and rode the taxi to Union Station um, and... So when I started walking up, I mean, obviously I could only walk a little ways and then rest. And it's not like I was carrying a lot of stuff. Like this is like a sissy amount of stuff that I had. I mean, the old me, the healthy me could have carried this in a heartbeat, you know, but I was sick and weak. And so I saw a, uh, saw a porter there and I said, hey, if I give you some money, will you carry my bags to wherever it is I'm going? Because I don't even know where I'm going. And he was like, you're not going to give me any money. I, I work here. And he started carrying my bags and we started talking and of course I said, do you believe in God? And he said, oh yes, I believe in Jesus. And I put my hand on his shoulder while we were walking. And I just started praying and I, I just, I, I blessed him, his children, his children's children. I just started praying. And then when we got to where I was going, he said, okay, you sit right there. And he put my bags down and he pointed to my gate and he said, they're going to call train seven. When they call train seven, you just walk to the, start walking towards that gate. I said, okay, thank you very much. God bless you. So that was miracle number one in Union Station. So then I was sitting there and you know I'm friendly so there was a lady next to me and she looked alone so I said are you traveling alone and she said yes and we started talking and then uh, after a while they called our train and oh so she watched my bags while I went to the restroom and I stood up and I started walking towards the gate all of a sudden here the guy pops up the porter he pops up and I was like oh my gosh hi and he's like come on and he picked up both my bags with one hand and motioned to me to follow him so I started following him past the line. So I didn't have to stand in line for, I don't know how long it would have been, maybe 20 minutes, but still standing up that long would have been hard for me. Brings me past the line, brings me all the way to the front, give my ticket to the lady, walks me to the right to the platform, points to the door that I need to go in and said, there you go. And I said, did God tell you to come back here? And he's like, yes, ma'am, he did. And I was like, thank you. Thank you, God. You know, I was so like encouraged by that, you know? So obviously I was nervous about the train and being locked in a steel tube with a bunch of people that are going to be drenched in chemicals. So I was specifically praying for um, if someone was going to sit right next to me that they not be a chemical person. Well, he answered that prayer too. The girl that sat next to me was a graduate student. She was very crunchy granola and she didn't have any fragrance on. And I had, I, um, I got an audible subscription the night before because I anticipated 31 hours of boredom on the train and nope she was very delightful we talked all the way to Minneapolis where she got off and then I was able to have two seats so I could kind of um curl up and I had bought a blanket at Walmart um which I still have it's over here 
and it was rolled up and I used that kind of as a pillow and I was able to get some sleep on the train. Um, and, uh, they had potato chips, which, you know, I have very few foods that I can tolerate. Um, apples, applesauce, potatoes, potato chips, uh, squash of many different varieties and eggs right now are basically my foods that I can eat. And, um, so anyway, they had potato chips, so I was able to buy potato chips on the, on the train and they had water. Uh, and I, I had some things of applesauce in my bag, um, and some organic, uh, fruit snacks that I bought just cause I didn't know what I was walking into. And, uh, so the train ride was okay. It was tolerable. There was definitely, oh, because Amtrak put in this air filtration system because of COVID. So it was constantly cleaning the air. And then when, oh, and you did have to wear a mask the whole time you were on the train. Um, and then there were a few people that would walk by that were scented. And I also got this canned air. It's called Boost Oxygen um, because it does clear up brain fog for me. So if I get a chemical hit and I'm all confused, I take a couple hits of that and it really, really helps. So yeah, 31 hours on the train. I got into Whitefish. My friend was there. We went to the store to get some fragrance-free soap because I actually shed a couple tears because I forgot my fragrance-free organic goat's milk soap in the hotel. Uh, so I got some soap, came back here, took a shower, and I was so exhausted. He had a cot set up for me, so I just laid down on it and fell asleep. And about two in the morning, woke up and was having a reaction. Now I know to the flame retardants on the cot. The only thing I did ask him was how old is the cot? And he said, it's about five years old. So I thought, oh, in five years, those things must have, you know, degraded to the point where I won't react. Nope. So that was scary for him. My first night here having that reaction, he was like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into type thing, you know? But, you know, once I explained everything and we talked to, uh, actually on speaker, talked to my pastor. And so I came back and now I'm basically, I, I did sleep on the porch that night outside and then it started raining. So I ended up going inside, but I kind of made a better. He helped me find, he had a bunch of blankets. He's been very, very kind. Um, I smelled like all his blankets and, uh, didn't react to these old army sleeping bags he has. So, I kind of put those down like a mattress and then another uh, another couple blankets underneath. So I've been sleeping on that um, in the back bedroom. And he has even, uh, I bought fragrance-free laundry soap and fragrance-free dish soap. So he's even been using that to help me out. And uh, <sighs> so the air here is great. It's dry. It's mountainous. I'm just going to show you around. So this is where, this is my little spot where I can get two bars of service. So I sit here often and, you know, this is what I, what I'm looking at. So yeah. Okay. So here's the big miracle. So the first day I was here, we went, um, that next day when I got up, we went around town looking at all the car lots, trying to see if there's any vehicles. We didn't find anything. And then the next day he kind of put the word out amongst his friends. One of his friends said he saw a minivan or she saw a minivan. And so we drove over to see it. And I ended up buying it. And I'm telling you, like, I just can't. God's provision is just so amazing. So I'm going to show you. I named her Blue Betty. And this is why it's Independence Day, because I'm independent again. Um, put my New York plates on it. I drove it once illegally, and I was, like, super nervous because I'm a law-abiding girl, you know. And um, so there's my stuff piled in there. But um, 200,000 miles. It's got cloth seats. Um, but so it, one of the seats was missing, which was good. And then yesterday I took a trip to the landfill to get rid of the other seat. So this is what it looks like in the back. You know, there's tears in the ceiling, um, but all the doors open. The, the driver's, the passenger side window doesn't open, which is, um, you know, that's rough because it was a hundred degrees and, but look at all this space, you guys. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I took it to, um, oh, so we did all the paperwork that same day. I overnighted it to my brother. Oh, shoot, somebody's messaging me, sorry. Um, in New York. 
and he, his wife, thank you, Jessica, works in the county building near the, uh, near the motor vehicle. So she took the paperwork in and I did miraculously, everything was right, except I forgot to say the amount of seat belts and the color. So that was good. Um, so yeah, so the, the paperwork is on its way. Um, so I did drive it a few times knowing that, you know, it's coming, it's legal. And my insurance agent, um, emailed me the insurance card. So I got to print that out in town. But so today I'm gonna, I did wash the outside. It doesn't really look like it. You know, there's rust and you know, it's old. It's a 2001. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. My first instinct, instinct was to rip out all this carpet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. Maybe I'll just vacuum it. I don't know. But I'm excited because my camping equipment is arriving piecemeal. Um, and so pretty soon I'll be able to go back out into the wilderness and camp. But even just being here, first of all, it's a miracle that I can tolerate his house. There is some mold on the like deck, but I don't know, it's not too bad. Either that or because this is good air, I'm still improving. And yesterday when I was on my way home from the landfill, I went past the, the state park and there was water. So I drove down there and it was free. I couldn't believe it. Like nothing in New York is free. And I went swimming. It was amazing. I was so excited and happy to have been able to have done that, you know. So my camping stuff is airing out over there. Um, even though my tent is flame retardant free, it, did, it still has to off gas because there's other chemicals on it. And the sleeping pad that I got from Thermarest, uh, that's airing out too. So, um, so that's where what I am doing right now and what's going on. And I was just beside myself. I thought that's why I let, you know, I, I recognized because I had friends all along this journey who have suggested to me doing a GoFundMe. And I kept saying, no, I don't want to, I, I don't want to ask people for money. And, you know, and then I thought, well, maybe it's just pride, you know, which, you know, that's a sin. Like, and so I, but I was really low in that hotel room and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? And so I did, you know, I allowed my friends to do the, well, it's not GoFundMe, it's something else, spot me or something. And then after as I regret it, I was like, well, I shouldn't have even done it. You know, God provided this van for $700, which, you know, I mean, I don't know, and everything's fallen into place, but you know, now I can see in a spiritual sense, you know, that was a lesson for me. You know, the lesson is, you know, not, not to be prideful, to ask for help when I need it. And I thought I needed it. I was so, you know, I was just so, I felt like I was painted into a corner, you know, but, um, I don't know. God is just so good. <laughs> got me here alive, got me a van within a week. I mean, just unbelievable. I just give him all the glory and all the honor. And, you know, uh, I went through some rough struggle in that hotel room being physically sick and um, wondering, you know, am I doing the right thing? You know, it, it, I think I put a post on one of my groups that said, I'm failing at mold avoidance. And I really felt like I was failing at mold avoidance. And some thoughts, some dark thoughts went through my head, like, maybe this is all ridiculous. Maybe I should have just stayed in my house. Maybe I should have done, you know how you do when you're getting a spot, you go back over your life and you wonder, should I have gone left here? Should... But the thing is, all of that is futile because, you know, you can't, I can't change the past. All I can change is what I do from this point forward. And I think about that scripture when Paul talks about, um, you know, not looking back, but looking forward, pressing towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ on my life. And, you know, I don't know. I hope I'm helping people. I hope I'm helping people that were like me, that I laid in bed and then I struggled to walk to the couch. Then I struggled to walk to the bathroom. I struggled to walk to the sink. I felt absolutely horrible. My whole body was like swollen and achy. And I, I had allergic reactions all the time. 
because my whole body was overloaded with inflammation from, you know, from various things over the, you know, I've talked about over the videos, but obviously, you know, the mold contributed and, uh, just tipped me over. So, uh, the only thing I will say today, uh, being a holiday and Sunday, I think somebody below me is doing laundry because I can taste like laundry, a little bit of laundry soap in my mouth or maybe dryer sheets. But this is the first day that I've even noticed anything like that up here, you know, um, because the driveway kind of snakes around and it's at the top of a plateau. So I'm so grateful to have this place to land and to regroup. And, you know, there's a lot of camping. I saw, I went, I drove, I've seen two campgrounds so far. One was a developed campground near that lake or that reservoir that I mentioned. And then the other one was, um, you know, like a boondocking type primitive place. So, you know, I, I'm excited to get out there now. You know, I was scared when I first got here because I was so physically weak that I was like, how can I camp, you know? But I'm getting, I'm starting to get some strength back. And I do have to go to Kalispell. It's about 70 miles from here. It's the closest Walmart. And, you know, typically that's where I get a lot of the things that I need. And I use the curbside pickup so I don't have to go in and get an exposure. So I'm investigating places to camp around Kalispell. Maybe I'll stay there, stay out there for a while. And then Albert also has been very generous to say that if you need to come back every once in a while and do laundry or, you know, just want to take a shower or a bath. Um, so that is an amazing thing to have because, I mean, if it rained for five days in a row, yeah, I'd come back here, you know. And I've been doing laundry, again, in a, in a five-gallon bucket with a little uh, plastic scrub board that I got um, from Amazon for like five bucks over there at that water spigot. Yeah, it's where I've been doing my laundry and then hanging it up. He, he strung up a rope for me. And, uh, so yeah, I'm doing much better and I'm, I'm grateful now to be out West. I think, um, my plan is to hang around out around Montana, um, at least until I get the money from the sale of my house and, you know, bang around in this van. I have another appointment for it on Tuesday. Oh, that's another thing. The mechanic said, for that money, this is a pretty good vehicle. The Because I had the oil changed and uh, the brakes. And I asked him to change the cabin filter. But on the thing, they said the cabin filter looks fine. So I'm going to have to tell them again, I really need I need you to do this. You know, I, it might look fine to you, but I want a new one in there. You know, so um, because as you know, with having allergens, changing that filter will help. This is an old vehicle, but it does apparently has air, it has air conditioning. And, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's been 100 degrees here every day since I've gotten here. So I'm going to talk to them about either fixing the window or charging the air or both. Maybe I, it doesn't smell moldy to me. I ran it for like 30 minutes yesterday and, you know, it wasn't cold, but it didn't smell moldy. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about all that. But I just wanted to tell everybody what's going on and tell you, um, again, I'll say it, Eric Johnson, thank you for, you know, for going out into the desert and for documenting your experiences because of everything that I've tried since I originally got sick, mold avoidance has brought me the most results in the quickest fashion. It's been hard, very hard, but if you're home and you're sick from mold and you're, you know, I, I, I see people all the time on the mold groups and they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to, what, where to go. The, the mantra, my mantra has been anything's better than there, right? So even sleeping in my car six miles from my house was better than sleeping in that moldy house, Right. Even all of it, everything I've done so far, even the things that have been hard were still better than there. I had something, I think Brian Rosner called it mold hold, you know, and that's what it was. It was like I was stuck. It was like my feet were stuck in cement. I can't explain it, but I can tell you that once I finally broke out of that, it's been, it's been hard, but it's, I, I wouldn't regret it. The only thing I regret about mold avoidance is not starting sooner. So 
you know, and the chemical sensitivities are still really bad, but uh, I have it on good authority that that will improve too. And there are, um, in Whitefish, um, which is about an hour from here, there's, I found a good biological dentist that I can go to to get my root canal out and um, start getting rid of all this other toxic stuff in my mouth. Um, and there's also the dentist office that I called recommended a naturopath and um, they said that she specializes in mold illness. So, I mean, obviously that type of medical care is going to cost a lot of money, um, you know, but the thing is, is that what's more important than health? Nothing, you know? So, um, it'll be on credit until my, oh, actually my appointment isn't even until September. So maybe I'll have money by then, but I, uh, you know, and if you're just a regular person watching this who isn't mold sick or isn't, doesn't have MCS, um, I would say just be cautious of the amount of toxins that you're putting in your body. And, when it comes to cleaners, this is something that for years I used all those toxic cleaners. I didn't know any better, but here's what I'm thinking now. If you wouldn't drink it, don't use it in your house because you're drinking it. When you're using it, you're drinking it in. You're, but you're breathing it in. It's being absorbed into your lungs. You're putting your hands in it. It's being absorbed into your skin. It's the same as drinking it. So if you wouldn't drink a cleaner, don't use it. You know, if you can't eat your lotion, or your body soap, don't use it. It's poisoning you, you know, and I didn't understand. I, and for years I was poisoning myself and those things all add up over time, you know, and put those together with the toxic medications that I took for 15 years and the toxic antibiotics and the mold. And, and that's what tipped me over. And my poor little liver and kidneys couldn't get rid of this stuff fast enough. So, all right, this is a really long video, but I'm just, I, you know, this Independence Day for me, even though, you know, I'm alone here, uh, my friend went somewhere, and it's okay, I feel, I feel good, I feel independent, you know, I feel grateful, so I'm signing off with that, thank you very much for being here and for sharing this journey with me, with me. it means, it really does mean a lot to me, thanks, oh, like, subscribe, and share.